Well, I, I have a really uh, interesting story because I was, um, I was actually, even though I was born in El Paso, Texas, uh, I spent uh, my childhood in uh, Juarez. Being bilingual uh, really has helped me understand uh, the community much better. What I do find here um, in New Mexico or here in Albuquerque is that uh, we don't value that, uh, that ability to speak two languages. You know, it's uh, very much English only, or English is the language that, that is spoken, and, and I'm okay with that because everybody should speak English. Good morning, students. This is your principal, Blanca Lopez, wishing you another great Friday. This is the first But we Friday. do have a great resource, especially now as the world is getting smaller and smaller, and, uh, and we have to work with other countries and other people in different parts of the world. Being bilingual is actually a big asset. Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Just like there's some, there's some people who say if, if the kids aren't reading by th third grade, look at the number of students who are not making it, and then that way you can figure out how many jail rooms you're going to make, you know. This is a science room. Why don't we, instead of thinking that way, we say, look at the number of kids who are not reading, let's teach them to read now at the third grade, fourth grade, so we don't have to pay for it later. How's it going? How do you like the new benches here? Do they work okay? They work good. There's, there's some good things and some bad things about the No Child Left Behind Act, you know. The good things about them is that really, we're looking at every student and every student is important to us. And so we need to bring all the test scores up for everybody. It doesn't matter whether you're white, brown, or purple. And I think all educators agree on that. What there is disagreement on is, unfortunately, uh, in America, is uh, we have different schools with different populations. And so a lot of, a lot of where you end up depends on where you start. Well, he'll have to control himself if he wants to be here. We don't do things that way. We have a large population of students who are whose whose English is not their first language, whose is Spanish, or it could be Navajo, or it could be another language. Los señores que son los dueños de esta tienda son son mexicanos. We also have a large population of students with uh, special needs, special education students. The, the other large group that doesn't do well is the, the, the economically disadvan disadvantaged student. You know, those students also uh, across the state don't do well. And so we have a triple whammy here. Okay, but this is the way it's going to work. Is it working for you? Like this? Okay, good. Let me know if you need anything, okay? Thank you. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that happens is that uh, from Reaganomics is the fact that nobody wants to be taxed. We all want the services, but nobody wants to pay for them. But in order to be successful, we really need to uh, give, like, give all the students a quality education that they deserve. I don't have any magic bullets in my belt. You know, I'm just one person. But I do have some wonderful professions that work with me, so my, but the way that I work best is by asking them for what do you think is going to work. Do you have any questions for me? Do you know who I am? Yeah, you're All right, yes, okay. How's the first two days of school? Good? Ah, uh, okay. And I mean, if, if you think that standing on your head and counting to 10 backwards is gonna help the students stay in school, then I'm okay with that. You know, let's try it and then let's look at the data, see if it works. If it works, we'll continue. If it doesn't, then we'll try something else. That's it? Yeah. Well, you know, we love you. That's why we want you here. <laughs> I don't know about that shirt you have on. I think that what really helps, uh, helps our teachers um, do what needs to be done is not to be a dictator and say, you must do this, this, and this. Where's your class? Where's your class? Come on, come on. It's, it's very important that the, that the teachers see the principal as one of the person who's willing to get right in there in the trenches and work with them. You know, I wouldn't ask my teachers to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Están haciendo una una documentación y quieren a ver si les puedes tocar la guitarra. Can you play the guitar for them? 
Yes. But the most important thing is to have buy-in from your teachers. Once they feel that they have, they have power over what's mm. going on, uh, then they, they, they'll do anything. And they want what we all want. We want student success. So together, working together, we could be a great force. This Friday, we're all getting together because we're gonna go to, uh, to the museum. They have the salsa night. My staff, we're dancing fools. My husband uh, always said, you know, and uh, told me, you know, you enjoyed this, your career way too much, you know, and he said, and they pay you for that? Because I used to go home and say, oh, this happened, or, or the, this student did this, or this, this happened at school, and he just says, wow, you know, I'm, I was always excited about it, I always enjoyed that. So.